Today on EMBN, we'll be discussing that massive subject of will e-bikes replace mountain bikes? Also going to be taking a look at chain suck and how to remove that from your e-bike. Also taking a look at night lights, helmet mounted, bar mounted, expensive lights, do you need them? Or should you simply use a six pound reversing light off a four by four? So the question is then, will e-bikes take over from traditional mountain bikes? Well, I certainly hope not, because there's always been a real healthy banter between the disciplines of downhill and cross country, four cross and enduro. And I think to see those sports get lost would be really, really sad, because I myself spend a lot of time watching downhill on TV. At the same time, mountain bikers of whatever discipline either like to spend hours and end on a smelly old uplift van or they like to dress in lycra at the same time there's some people who like to spend hours carrying their mountain bike up crazy steep mountains now i think we can cover this subject three ways what people are saying out and about on the trails what we're seeing in the shops or on the trails worldwide and also the solid facts on e-bike sales so first of all chris i think let's cover off what people are saying because it's very mixed right yeah definitely out on the trails people are saying that the e-bike sales are actually massively overselling that higher end mountain bike uh top yeah. end stuff i think know? so in Fr like if you go into in france and mm -hmm. italy i think especially so yeah like that's their their country which is ahead of the curve mm -hmm. well, maybe e but even in britain things mm -hmm. they've taken off right yeah yeah definitely what's you seeing out on the trails that uh, um, we've got the missing uh, uninformed people saying the usual blah 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 <laughs> fat for lazy people or the usual yeah. we're seeing the informed people actually saying that yeah they're great and they'd love one but that price point is going to be a stumbling block at the same time uh, we recently spoke to mike Sinyad, who's the founder of specialized bikes and obviously they recently launched the new levo uh, i asked mike uh, what where e-bikes stood in in the in the big scale of things at specialized bikes Mike, uh, we've been riding some amazing e-bikes. Yeah. I mean, you. they are the next level, right? Well, thank you, Jonesy. Yeah, it's, it's great to be here riding. And, um, you know, we have a team really dedicated to making the, making the electric bike to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the days of carrying mountain bikes and pushing them over hills are pretty much gone. Do you think? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I still like the purity. You know, in fact, the truth be told, when the guys first came out with the bike, I said, I said, you know, electric, that's not for us. This was like six years ago. I said, that's too pedestrian. We're performance brand, athletic brand. And they go, Mike, shut up, ride the bike. <laughs> that's the way they talk. We talk to each other. Yeah. And I go, oh, my God, that is really, that's magical. Yeah, yeah, it is magical. So, yeah. And I think there's always the room for, for both categories. How important is this new bike to Specialized? Yeah, it's, um, I would say it's the most important bike we've ever made. Wow, strong words there from Mike. Yeah, totally. And you know what? Mike was actually, took a bit of convincing early doors mm -hmm. back in 2011, 2012, right. when they were developing the Levo, but he came around and you know, realized this was, was, was pretty big and you know, like, like his words say there. Mm -hmm. uh, but Chris, what are we seeing out on the trails? This is, uh, this is, what's the reality? Yeah, I think when we went out for the shoot uh, last week, we were out on the Forest of Dean here in the UK, went for lunch outside the cafe. There was literally e-bike takeover. We were talking, I think it was about 10 or 12 Bikes, and nine of those bikes are actually e-bikes. So we're seeing a big shift in the UK. And what we're seeing as well is a big shift in the style of riders as well. I think I, I noticed a lot more on my social media, people actually switching to those e-bikes and doing some crazy stuff. I think back in the early days, um, you know, you could be doing those jumps and drops and things like that and stand out as an e-biker. And that, but now it's become quite the norm as I've seen on, yeah. on, uh, on, on Only social. yesterday, there was a shredders on e-bikes mm. yesterday. Mm. Uh, do you know what? I think to answer the question though, will e-bikes take over? I think what you're going to see is traditional downhillers and cross-country riders. This will be doing that because that's yeah, what they've been used to. Mm -hmm. And maybe like a guy in the uplift van of the day, it's probably going to it's going to increase his range and his what was the word? Riding years. His riding years. Yeah, yeah. At the same time, there's going to be a new group of mountain bikers coming in, so there'll probably be a convergence, right? Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. a good mix up of riders. And you know, I think what's quite telling though is that when you go to a bike show and you'll see all these different brands, mm. 
the e-bikes are actually now up front in the brand catalogs. Yeah. They're not like tacked onto the yeah. behind. And on the yeah. And on the websites, the e-bikes yeah. are there. It's yeah. it's yeah. plain for everybody to see. So mm. it's it's kind of becoming like in the past, downhill was like the blue ribbon discipline. Yeah. You see now slightly e-bikes mm. actually up there. It's like the man bike manufacturer's dirty little secret, yeah. but now it's the actual showpiece. Yeah, yeah, which brings us on to the facts. You know, we can only we can only tell you what the facts are uh, on the ground within within different bike brands. And so we're now going to have a look at what these different brands are saying about their e-bike sales. Right, let's talk some figures then, Steve. What are we seeing? Uh, yeah, we've had some data and some forecasting. In. This uh, shows the landscape of bicycles in general, and there's some quite telling facts there that in bet between 1990 and 2017, there's a huge increase in the amount of e-bikes. But the, the critical thing here is it seems that mountain bike sales are down from 2005 to 2017 and beyond. That seems to be a trend that's happening. And there's an increase in e-bike sales. For example, e-bike sales are 2% of the market in 2005, up to 51% in 2017, and 56% forecast for 2022. When we say e-bikes, what are we talking? Full suspension or are we talking like hybrid e-bikes? Well, you know, I think- Commuting e-bikes. This this is the fact this you know this is the question is we want to know is like what percentage of that fifty six percent are going to be mountain bikes compared to uh, city bikes but we're not talking about in the city we're talking mountain yeah, bike yeah. and if we're talking about facts uh, there's some really interesting facts here from Cube bikes now Cube was actually the first e mountain bike I rode back in 2012 well, 2013 yeah. but you can see that Cube have had a phenomenal mm. increase in sales of e bikes since, yeah. since 2012 but I think what's what's interesting from Cube bikes is that when you when you look at their their sales of e bikes they are um, they've primarily been tour bikes or mountain bike mm. hardtail. I think that counts for like three quarter, at least three quarters of their their so. sales of e-bikes consistently mm. over the past six to seven years. Mm. But um, e-bikes, e full suspension e-bikes, are about probably about a quarter of of their sales. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Cube is selling those traditional uh, mountain bikes as well. But let's talk about a pure e-bike uh, manufacturer, say Mustache Bikes. Yeah, from France. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what sort of figures are they seeing? Well, I think uh, when you look at uh, moustache bikes, they make urban bikes and mountain bikes, and it's a 50-50 split wow. between urban bikes and yeah. mountain bikes. But I think what we need to know is what the split is within mountain bikes between hardtails and full suspension. What's the, yeah, look what at the percentages there? Looking at their figures, the full suspension uh, sales is 80% of their sales what? compared to 20% hardtail. So big figures there from uh, wow. moustache Interesting. as well. Right, Chris, we've seen uh, some forecasting and some data on a big scale about e-bikes in general. We've seen that breakdown within a company, mm -hmm. how much they're selling between touring bikes and mountain bikes. And then we've seen a company such as Moustache, what their sales are like. Mm -hmm. But what is happening on the micro level? What's happening on bike shops? Now, only yesterday I spoke to a guy in a bike shop who's selling one e-bike a day. But then we just had a call from uh, a, an e-bike shop, which we work quite a lot with, and they say they're selling between three to four E mountain bikes a day at three to four and a half thousand pounds. That crazy. is bonkers. That is crazy, isn't it? No wonder we're seeing them everywhere out there on the trails. Yeah. But the question is, Chris, let's let's answer the question. What 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 does the future hold for e mountain bikes versus mountain bikes? Is the future gonna be where uplift fans are gonna be chucked in the in the in the in the ditch gathering dust? Are we gonna see a shorter Alpine season? What do you think we're gonna see? I think we're going to see uh, that big change of riders swapping across the e-bike scene. Um, those original die-hard downhillers that are going to get sick and tired of pushing those bikes up the hill. They're going to be on e-bikes soon. We're going to see those cross-country guys swapping across to e-bikes. Are we going to see a generation of older age shredders though? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Will we see the disappearance of the local shredders that are pushing those bikes up the hills that we've talked about already, sitting in those uplift fans? Are they going to be riding up the hills? What are the kids going to be riding in the future? That's a good one, yeah. yeah. And what's going to happen if more ex pro are suddenly going to think, wow, I can make a good living about being an e-bike and uh, about being an e-bike ambassador. Yeah. What's going to happen when that that scene mm. shifts across to yeah. e-bikes? And the age of the riders that we see out in the woods are they going to be like up in their ages as well? We're going to see more older people out there, miles out in the woods. Bottom line: mm -hmm. Would you be happy if e-mountain bikes replaced mountain bikes? No. So, Would you? No, because it's all good fun. It's all exactly. it's all riding bikes in the woods. Yeah, Simple yeah. as that.
So it's time for Tech of the Week. Now, up here in the Northern Hemisphere, things are getting a little bit wet and mucky. Yeah, we see a few of you guys out there having problems with chain suck. If you don't know what chain suck is, basically where that uh, chain sits on the front chain ring and gets sucked up back round on the sprocket or jam up behind your chain stay. Mm. So that's what chain suck is. But Rich Butters has a really neat idea for this, especially if you're running that Bosch and, unit. And this is specifically for Bosch, right? Mm -hmm. Because Bosch run a, a, you know, maybe a 15 to 17 mm -hmm. chain ring up front. Now some bike brands such as uh, Mustache uh, or Trek have got some little bash guards in there. Mm -hmm. However, Richard's got a really neat uh, aftermarket, uh, what would you call it? CNC aluminium one, I think it looks like. So yeah, yeah really good alternative to that keeps it on there. Keeps the keeps the chain running on on the on the sprocket. Yeah. Chris, I've always wondered. Um, you're riding. You ride massive jumps, mm -hmm. like sixty footers. Um, uh, do you do you run your suspension differently on 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 big jumps compared to when you ride natural terrain when yeah. you're doing trials and downhill and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think on those big stuff, I tend to um, run a lot harder suspension on there. Um, real stiff spring on the rear. I tend to run the fork a little bit softer, but I always like a big stiff spring. I don't get it. I mean, the, 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 it's all smooth ground. You just, I mean, you could, if you, I mean, BMXs do it on rigid bikes. True. Why do you need? Just that predictable feeling. Don't want that bike bottoming out in the takeoff. Um, so you're trying to make your bike as rigid as possible. Yeah, trying to make it like a big BMX, <laughs> basically. <laughs> uh, but Chris, you recently went to TF Tune, mm -hmm. right? To have a chat about suspension setup. Yeah. What do they have to say? Yeah, they changed a few bits over on my Kineva. It was looking a bit hammered on the rear shock, to be fair. Well, no surprise, really, coming in from 40 feet in the air. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they had a little chat, did a few little setups. But yeah, check this video out. Brought my Kinevo today in to see Greg. He's gone a few different setup techniques for me, um, you know, for the big hits and stuff that I do on my Kinevo. Swapped a few things out. You're going to run us through it, Greg, what we've done today? Yeah, for sure. So um, we've taken the shock apart, mm -hmm. given it a quick service as well. So changed out the usual components, bottom out bumper, um, which is looking a little bit tired in your case. Um, also the kind of spring clip and stuff we've upgraded as well to go with um, the new 700 pound spring that we've had to put on there for you. So that's so, quite a heavy spring, isn't it? For I'm what? Uh, 96 kilogram? Yeah, yeah. so um, when we're doing the spring rates on e-bikes specifically, we look at not only the rider's weight, um, but also the kind of weight of the bike. So our calculator works off um, more conventional, kind of just um, what would be classed as a kind of normal bike weight. Mm -hmm. um, obviously with an e-bike, you've got the motor and the battery, um, obviously nicely integrated in the Kinevo, but still the extra weight of it. Um, so we have to take into account that on top of your riding weight, and obviously then, um, each individual's kind of personal uh, use of the bikes. Obviously, in your case, you're uh, jumping quite mm -hmm. a lot. To be fair, I think, you know, um, <laughs> giving it some grief, yeah, giving it a bit of grief. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so we did a service. Um, slight change of spec of the damper as well. Yeah. For, refreshed the bottom out bumper and checked everything was all good. And then uprated uh, the spring, uh, the spring itself um, from what was a 500 pound spring uh, that comes stock on the Kinevo. Mm -hmm. Um, skipped past a fair few different options and then went, uh, in your case, for the 700 pounds. That's uh, the biggest one that they do currently, it's, isn't it's it? The biggest yeah. one they do currently, yeah. Um, going off of kind of your riding feedback and yeah, yeah. the kind of stuff you're doing on yeah. it, so. Now, Karen Ella and Holger Meyer are no strangers to adventure and they ride for Scott and they've been out in their e-bikes. They put together this great video from Lake Garda in Italy recently. Chris, uh, here in the darks of winter, I mean, look at that blue lake. Blue lake, Garda. dusty trails, little oh. jumps. It looks amazing place, Steve. I mean, that's inspiring, right? Yeah, yeah. Makes me want to go and ride some dry terrain. Ridge trails, huh? like that flowing through. How dry tires, oh, don't. green leaves. Stopping for a big lunch on a, a big lake. Look at that as well. I don't think you need a big lunch. <laughs> and a way to charge up your batteries. What could be better? Yeah, it's great. Uh, I just love to see these. I love seeing these e-bike adventures. You know, I can't wait to get back on some more of them, right? I can't wait for it to stop raining. Yeah. Now, closer to home, I hear that Chris has been in touch with some of the South Wales locals about the e-bike scene down there. Yep. Uh, I hear you've been talking to Jamie Reese. Yeah, it's been getting big down there. Jamie got in contact uh, with me regarding about the age thing that we did recently on the show. He says he's 29, uh, his mate Lee Howells is 41, and his other mate is 27 too, Jordan. We will ride downhill, but recently all brought Kinevo to ride them just as hard as the 
the, the, the DH bikes that they did have. Wow, crikey. They were on the fence with e-bikes at first, but brought them all together at Don Skeens and not one of them has looked back since. Absolutely amazing and it opened up so much more riding for us. We don't like pedaling up the climbs, so a long travel e-bike was a must. That's an inspiring story. Mm. Few adjustments, a heavier spring, Magic Mary DH tires and a tire insert. It's almost as capable as a downhill bike. Wow, nice one guys. Yeah, sending big uh, road gaps and stuff. Well, big you need to go and meet up with, with, with Yeah, I've ridden that with, road with, gap with actually. But look at all those guys checking it out. As well. Wow, like you've got, actually got e bike spectators there in the woods go. of South e Wales. Free riders alive and kicking in South Wales. Well, Craig, you need to That's watch right. your back. I know. Huh? <laughs> These guys are on it. Welcome to Electrics, the part of the show where we show you guys how to do all those tips and tricks on your e bike. Today, you're going to be taking a look at the Endo. So the endo is quite a cool trick just to show off with you mate. The endo is pulling on that front brake, lifting that rear wheel up, stalling it for as long as possible and as steep as possible. Okay, so let's have a quick look, breaking the endo down into three easy steps. So coming in, good forward speed, squash that suspension. As the suspension rises, pull that front brake on, shift your weight forward, stiff arm to make sure those arms are locked, the weight's going forward, lifting that back wheel up whilst holding that front brake. Let's have a quick go. Nice and slowly at first, just get used to that speed. Big squash, and the front brake on. Just letting it off there, and you saw the back wheel just drop straight down. So don't be too as scared of getting a big handful of front brake. You really need an aggressive squash to make it actually work. So just work up nice and small, just bringing that back wheel up, up and up, and just bring, building it up, little baby steps. You get there in the end. Real cool trick, impresses your mates. When it comes to use out on the trails, there's a few bits you can use it for. But my favourite one is a 180 Endo, which we've done in electrics before. I mean, you can turn that bike around straight on the spot. I'll give you a quick demonstration of that one. The 180 Endo, basically the same, but with a flick and a turn of the handlebar. That's it for the Endo. Keep practising those Endos. They're going to come bigger and bigger. Get that bum to touch the back tyre. See you next week. So it's time for Climb of the Week. We've had this one in from Victor from the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. His older son is 15 years old, riding a Levo, um, and his younger son is 10 years old, so he's still not old enough to be riding that e-bike by himself. Older son rides only e-bikes since he was 13, so giving him the younger one a toe up the hills. Good work on sharing that e-bike power. You've got to share the love, haven't you, Chris? Definitely. Wow. I, you know, I saw that recently mm. down at your local Windhill Bike Park, where the family had two e-bikes oh, yeah. towing the kids up, yeah. the, up the bank. Yeah, makes Honestly, a there's a lot of love in e-bike riding, and say a lot of love. <laughs> Now we've just been doing a feature with Andre here, uh, who's got the ultimate in off-grid charging. So keep an eye out for that feature uh, coming up soon. However, I saw this. Now, Andre, I've seen this on the back of a quad or something before. Where have I seen that? Yeah, it's just a standard uh, plastic uh, <laughs> reversing light. How much is that? <laughs> uh, these are five, six pounds. Are you that. kidding me? No, right? no, 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 they're, they're, they're dirt, dirt cheap. Uh, and then what you do is you just put an LED bulb in there. Right, and then... You get these LED bulbs now for going to a, into a into a car and so on yeah. for replacing your indicator. And then you got a lead, and then you got to, what's that? Where's this battery from? Uh, and these you just get on the internet. That these, is these ridiculous. Are, Look how neat that is. That's like in the palm of your hand there. How much are they? Um, about fifteen pounds. <laughs> you can get them on eBay. Dirt, right, dirt go ahead, cheap. plug it in. I okay. Bet. <laughs> so you just plug it in. Yeah. And as simple as that. Wow. Look at the width of the beam on that. The really nice thing about it is a really wide beam. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a, it's I mean, not so a narrow it's, beam. It's daylight, so you're not going to see it truly, but that's great, isn't it? That's a perfect it works. night riding setup. Yeah, it is, it's fantastic. So, and what's this one here you got? This one is uh, an off-road 4x4 reversing light. Right. Are Again, you, it's a really nice wide beam. Are you uh, going to tell me now this is going to be like £15 or something? Those, <laughs> actually, no, for £11 you get two. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is, you can sp like you can spend like hundreds and hundreds of pounds oh, on these on these specialist yeah, yeah. mountain bike lights, right? Yeah. But you've just proved you can get it there for less than hundred quid. Oh yeah. Brilliant. The only, thing, only you've got to do is make a bracket. Yeah. You've got to love a bit of ghetto tech, right? <laughs> So in the comments this week, we've had some good feedback from our 10 ways to ruin an e-bike mountain bike. There's more than 10 ways to ruin an e-bike ride, yeah, isn't there? Yeah, there was some good ones in there. Chris, did I see the clothes on again? Yeah, it's nice not to have you farting in my face again. Hold on, you were the one doing that. <laughs> hey, first up, this is from Timberman. 
yeah. not knowing your mates right behind you when you let loose a snot rocket. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I've had this one in from Bob Bobby as well. One one person in the group who needs a lift home announces that they can only stay for an hour because they're going shopping. Oh, well, that. I get that all the time mm -hmm. with you. <laughs> and Eddie Jeffries. Hi, Eddie. How's it going? Uh, forgetting to even take the battery. Nothing like adding a 40 mile round trip to go and get it. Oh. Do you know what, Eddie? I've actually done it myself. I've done that as well. <laughs> we have this one in from Alexander Gospic as well. I thought Rami Malek is winning the Oscar this year, but I was wrong. I have a friend who never has cash, never has enough water, who farts like crazy. It sometimes makes you think I'm riding in a gas chamber or some vicious storm is coming, but he still never manages to ruin my ride. Oh, bless him. Nice to have some mates, right? Okay, it's time for the flickering, revolving plastic globe, and this week is from Australia. Ooh, crikey, Australia got a pace at the rugby at the weekend, didn't it? Anyway, it's not about, it's not about rugby, it's about mountain biking. Yep. And this is from Doug at the Good Bike Doctor in Clasterton, Queen. Queensland, right? Yep. So he's just had a guy, Tom, from Germany pop into his bike shop, just finishing an epic e-bike adventure from the west coast of Australia to the east coast. 6,000 Ks? Yeah. You've got to be kidding me. 50 degrees heat. Started in Perth, finishing in Cairns, 600 K in two months. Sandy desert, uh, desert scorch in 50 degree wow, heat. Wow, that's crazy. What's that, two, four batteries for the longer days? Yes, yeah, so he's got wow. 2,000 watt hours of pa uh, power on this bike. Wow. What does that say there? And Violo Nifinity stepless internal gear. So he's got internal gear hub on there as well. Four batteries. Imagine that range. Wow, on that, that thing. is a crazy, crazy undertaking. Yeah. Crikey. Nice one, uh, Doug. Yeah, nice one, cool. Tom. Hell of a ride. Good Hell ride. of a ride. Hell of a ride. All the way across there, look. Whoa. Okay, it's coming up on the channel this week. On Friday, we've got Steve showing us how to tackle those hill climbs. How Things, we tackle yeah, those hill climbs. Yeah, how we tackle those hill the climbs. Fine detail. Thing is, like from the rock and the slab, all those secret techniques that we use. But coming up on Sunday is I'm going to take out my first ever mountain bike, specialized stump jumper of 1988, and just see how far mountain bikes have come in 30 years. Christmas is coming, the goose is getting fat, mind. <laughs> yeah, we've got loads of offers in the EMBN shop. Check it out, puffer jackets, t-shirts, hoodies, you name it, it's all in the shop. It's the bike box. Yeah, let's get into it. We've got this one in from Martin of his Turbo Levo. On Wiltshire. Box and Wiltshire. Went for a lovely evening ride through Caution for Boxwoods. Fortunately, left it too late, got lost in Conkwell and needed his wife to come pick him up. I do, no I lights. Do, 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 do like that barbed wire. Do you like that barbed wire? I do like the barbed wire. Low shot. winter sun. Considered, I'm going to give that a super nice. Straight in From there. just a few miles down the road in Box. Next up, we've got Tomas here with his Turbo Levo from Slovenia. He's managed to actually get this even lighter than the uh, 22 kilograms, down to 20 mm, kilos. Fair, kilos. Good, good effort, Swapped yeah. Swapped a load of bits around, yeah, liking that. Nice out of focus um, backdrop in there as well. Yeah, I like that. Chris, gone. It's got to be, super right? Nice, it's got to it? be. Yeah. It's Christmas. No dropper on it's that not. post as well. Come on, let's move on. Yeah, cool. Um, we've got this one in from Derek as well. Focus Jam 2. Um, Arkansas. Bill. Yeah. Now, at Bentonville, apparently there's lots of trail building going on in Bentonville, right? Mm -hmm. And I have to say something, that riding all those rocks track. looks pretty good. That's, that's right. What do you think on the pick, though, Steve? I think that is definitely 100% a nice. Let's move on, then. Ooh, wide angle. Yeah. This wide is... angle of Morin. This uh, is, I'm Martin Matt, 58 from Morin in Liechtenstein. I've been riding at EMTV since May 2007 and just love it. My bike allows me to make tours, which I could not do on a bio bike. Bio bike? Bio Shouldn't bike. Like acoustic bio bikes? Mm. With EMT, I tend to go to more technical, doing crazy climbs, exploring more, having fun. He's had a bad crash, apparently. Season's over, severe crash six <sighs> weeks ago. Dislocated Damn. a fractured shoulder. Eager to oh, get back on it. Crikey. Well, condolences to mm. Liechtenstein, and uh, we're going to give you a super nice. <laughs> Wow. Oh, I love it, love it, love it. So this is from Andrew, specialised Levo on the Peak District. Um, riding with a friend who a normal MTB, and this is a four mile ride before we lost our way around Lady Bower Reservoir. Visited the lost village of Derwent. So this is that B52 Super Fortress crash up in the middle of the Peak District. Mm -hmm. um, That's where they filmed the Dam Busters up there, yeah, didn't yeah. they? And the Lady Bower was um, a big reservoir that got flooded, wasn't it? Chris, this is a mountain bike channel, not a Sorry, history not a history lesson. Channel. Let's move on. It's a nice. 
Got this one here. That's a nice two. Jack from uh, Q on his Cube Nat Neutral Hybrid. Nat. From the calf, the How Gills in Cumbria. Mm -hmm. Rain stopped long enough for a quick blast up there, so you can see for miles up there. I think that's a nice. Moving on. Do you Andy here with his Cube Stereo Hybrid Land 500? Dead, no. Land dead, no. This is a ride when I go and visit his mam. It's a lovely little route, just has a wicked steep climb. <laughs> Ideal for my EMTB. Oh, Absolutely loving it. Beautiful, lovely. Isn't that a nice as well, I think? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Whoa, monster oh, spoon. Oh. He's got this one in from Paul, this is 2019 Turbo Lido, out exploring with a massive spoon. What are you thinking, Steve? I think it's a nice. It's a nice as well, bike quite isn't there on the angle, is it? Mm -hmm. Front wheel's chopped out. Got this one in from Charles, high bike full seven LT. Ogden Water, where's Ogden Water? No idea. Raced up the hill for 10 minutes over some pretty rocky terrain in turbo mode. What are you thinking, Steve? It was this. This is my bike, Wallace. Yeah, I'll yeah. give that a nice. I'm gonna make it a nice. Yeah. Well. Ooh. Nice. I guess we just love the sun this time of year, don't we? I think so. so I this think is from happened. Noble. This is a high bike X2 All Mountain Six mm -hmm. uh, in Moab, Utah, overlooking the Arches National Park. I mean, where are the arches? Where's those big landforms? It's all a bit flat. I mean, I love the weather. I love the landscape. I love riding in Moab. Convincing his mate to buy e-bikes, so... The question is, is it a nice or super nice? I'm just gonna go for a nice with that, I think. Nice! And we're out to the bike vault! <laughs> Crikey, started off really powerful, loads of super nice. Faded out towards the Faded end. Faded out towards the but end. keep those bikes coming in, we'll be sure to feature them on the next, on the upcoming shows. Keep those bikes coming in, upload service down below, link to that, keep them coming. Don't forget to leave your comments below, especially on that subject of Will e-bikes take over from mountain bikes? Mm. Don't forget to keep those questions coming in from our Tuesday show, Ask EMB, where me and Steve combine our knowledge and get back to you on anything, any questions you've got to do with your e-bike. Just drop a comment below, hashtag Ask EMBN, and we'll get back to you on I a Tuesday. Love, I do love Ask EMBN. Good, EMBN. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's show. Drop some comments in the box below. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN, and we'll see you next week.